We are going to talk about the role of political parties in entrenching our democracy. We now know we have a coalition political party. We have another coalition of political parties that is claiming to be the majority in the National Assembly. <laughs> and all. So we'll be talking to one of the political party leaders in the country. Before we welcome and introduce him, Siti Muga has the day's proverb from Benghazi. Is it? <laughs> Well, or is it from Tripoli? You know, Libya is two. You have to tell us which Libya. You know, Benghazi yeah. is in Libya. Tripoli is in Libya. Why? And the proverb mm. is it's from, from Libya. Libya. From somewhere in between. So now you figure out. Okay. <laughs> he came running and was met by a slope. He came running and was met by a slope. Mm. <laughs> Take your mind there and just picture it. Mm -hmm. If you really want to exercise your imagination, think of running down a slope. Mm -hmm. If you really, really want to exercise your imagination, think of running down a slope when there's rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Irongo Nyakera, chairman of the Farmers Party. <laughs> yes. Good morning. Morning, morning to you. How are you doing? Uh, doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, very glad to be here. Actually, it's a very beautiful uh, studio. You know, we've been doing all this during uh, uh, through Zoom. Yes. So I've never really had an opportunity to be here. So uh, I'm glad to be here this morning. When you experience it, it's not as, as, as good as when you are experiencing it virtually, right? Uh, virtually is good because I don't have to wake up early. Mm. <laughs> Just have to wake up two minutes uh, before <laughs> seven. Yeah, <laughs> so that works quite well. Uh, but being here is, 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 is then you get to experience it uh, much better. Indeed, yeah. we've had several conversations with you in uh, 2020, 2021, and this is when you were pushing for the right of tea farmers, right? Yes. And you're talking about reforms in the KTDA, reforms in the uh, laws as well on KTDA. Law went to the Senate and it passed. And we talked about about it as well with you. Now you went ahead and formed a political party and called it the Farmers Party. Or did you form or did you join a party and renamed it the Farmers Party? Actually, Farmers Party has always been there. Mm. Uh, what, what happened is now we uh, we joined uh, the uh, the party mm. uh, because uh, it felt uh, actually it it speaks for the voiceless and. Uh, uh, when we are there and are able to articulate the issues uh, of the farmers, uh, then we'll be able to get the real change. Mm. And I think that's really what uh, the political parties are uh, about, uh, mm. because uh, the, uh, me articulating the issues as Irungu Nyakera may not get as far as when you're articulating them uh, through the pa uh, party uh, platform. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know, even in the West and other countries, you find that there are parties that are specific to an agenda. You have the conservatives, you have the green movement, you have all these different parties that are uh, specific to an agenda. So the farmers, uh, as we know in Kenya, uh, 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 the uh, agriculture uh, forms about 50% of our GDP. Mm. Uh, 50, uh, 25% uh, directly and another 25% indirectly. About 65% of our population earns their living. Uh, either directly or indirectly through the forward and backward linkages to agriculture sector. And uh, the food basket in Kenya, which is agriculture, is about 3 trillion shillings per year. So agriculture is huge. Mm. Uh, and that's why if we take care of our farmers, then we're able to take care of the nation. So mm. apart from just the name, the title, the Farmers Party, what else about this party makes it the party for farmers? Is it about the structure, the messaging, the composition of the party? What makes the Farmers Party different from, let's say, the Hustlers Party, UDA? Uh, it's because the Farmers Party uh, really focuses also on farming. Yeah, uh, The agenda is on how do we actually make this country, uh, how do we build on the food basket? How do we uh, reduce the imports of food uh, into this country? How do we empower the farmers? How do we ensure that the farmers are putting more money in their pockets? Uh, so that's really the agenda. And, they, and uh, when you're talking about farming, uh, then you're also looking at how do we bring in the youth? Uh, how do we make fa farming a bit more sexy so that the youth can also be participate 
uh, in it. And uh, if you look at, uh, we're just looking at uh, the the, uh, the kind of imports that we're having. Uh, we've moved from about 10% uh, import of food uh, over the last decade to about 17%. And it's 17% of a much bigger uh, GDP, so you can imagine what that means. Mm. Uh, last year alone, we imported palm oil. Uh, it's about 90 billion uh, shillings, uh, which is palm oil and edible oils. If you're looking at like uh, rice, Last year we imported about 25 billion shillings of rice, mm. uh, while we're exporting about 17 billion of coffee. So our coffee and rice exports are, are cancelling out, mm. yeah? while we could actually be uh, empowering our farmers and uh, farmlands uh, to make that an income for our locals and our young people, and our, uh, instead of actually having it as uh, 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 impacting negatively on our forex. And we all know about our forex, mm. but CBK has clarified that we have enough <laughs> forex. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying in terms of how of, of what needs to happen. And I think the lingering question for the longest time has then been how. I mean, like you say, it sounds great. And we have seen examples of how agriculture has actually come out and it has helped in many other countries. It has boosted the economy for the longest time. It has been said that uh, the performance or the positive performance of the economy rests heavily on agriculture in Kenya. But we've not been able to actually see it play out. So I think if there are three things that must be done, what are those things that must be done today? I mean, we talk about cheap inputs, fertilizer being one of them. It, it continues to be an issue. But is that is that enough? What needs to happen essentially to make sure that agriculture will then contribute towards the economy and then make, you know, a profitable livelihoods for Kenyans? I think uh, essentially... Um the, there has to be a significant government intervention uh, for, for agriculture uh, mm. to play uh, the, the role that we want it to play, especially uh, when it comes to uh, make, uh, bringing an earning uh, mm. to the farmer. Mm. Uh, first is at the farm level. At the farm level, uh, we need uh, to, to provide uh, farmers with the right inputs at the right prices. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, because you find that uh, a farmer... Uh, who's uh, farming on, ten, on on an acre mm -hmm. does not have the fertilizer, does not have the know-how, does not have the proper seedlings. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting ten, uh, instead of getting about thirty kilo, uh, bags uh, of maize per acre, mm -hmm. they're getting ten bags or five bags. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, then it means that the labor that you're applying to get uh, five bags is the same labor you'd apply to get thirty bags. Mm -hmm. It means that the, the if if you have uh, rented out that uh, land because in a lot of places it's the same cost of renting the uh, leasing the land. Mm -hmm. So you uh, so we need to look at the the costs mm -hmm. of inputs and also the extension services. Uh, as you know, uh, the extension services uh, uh, were, were, were devolved. So this again moves on to the uh, county government. Uh, then the second thing is uh, about um, the is the value chain. Yeah, from the point of the farmer uh, producing the, the, the produce mm. all the way to the market, there are too many uh, brokers, there are too many middlemen, uh, the uh, the there are too many logistical costs mm. that the farmer then gets to incur mm. that we have to, to, to find ways to bring them down. Actually, it's about 34% uh, of the uh, of the venture price. Mm. So we bring those costs down uh, and uh, that could even be having platforms where farmers are able to find buyers and sellers in the same. It, it, will, it should also be through uh, the formation of cooperatives uh, where these cooperatives are able to uh, uh, amalgamate and aggregate uh, for farmer produce so that the farmer does not have to go so far to deliver their produce. I look at an example of Kirinyaga uh, where the, 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 the bananas, mm. they have a, a, a model for uh, bananas yeah. uh, where instead of the farmer taking the banana to market, uh, they've partnered with these people like Akina Twiga Foods and all that yeah. and uh, the farmer is able to take uh, to their bananas on Tuesdays on Wednesdays into a certain buying center mm. uh, which weighs the bananas and then on Thursday they take it all the way to Kutu's as a cooperative. Mm -hmm. They sell it and then by Thursday in the evening the farmer has money in their pockets. The farmer's costs are very low because... And they, uh, oh, I, 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 sorry, just to, just to clarify, is there government intervention in this process? Uh, the intervention there can only be at the county government level because sure. even cooperatives are also devolved. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, so the, the the county government then has to empower 
and b uh, bring together this the, 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 uh, the, 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 the county government has to bring together these cooperatives to be able to deliver on the same. Mm. Then finally, the final is the market yeah, mm. Uh, mm. as a third item. So, so uh, because you see, as soon as farmers are clear that uh, they'll find market for their produce mm. and they will not struggle and the produce will not uh, rot in the farm the farmers will produce mm. yeah and that's why you see cash crops succeeding mm. yeah a tea farmer knows uh they just need to pick tea take it to the buying center the rest will be done they'll get the money at the end of the month yeah. they don't have to worry is there a market and all that who's so, buying it who's buying it and all that it? yeah mm -hmm. uh, is it being exported is it local so we need to focus on building these markets mm. yeah uh, as, uh, and uh, these markets can be done in three ways this is the, the local market yeah the export market or the value addition market mm. yeah of course by doing value addition you're increasing the value of the produce by almost 16 times in certain instances just by doing value addition mm. and the cost of value addition is actually not even significant uh, in many ways because it's is about uh, getting even investors to come in to, to add putting uh, these such such farms for the same so if we if we were to help the farmer and put money in the farmer's pocket and uh, hence uh, make agriculture uh, great mm. we have to look at the farm and the farm and, and how to bring down the cost mm. uh, the value chain and how to reduce uh, the, the, the bring down the cost across the value chain mm. and finally how to get the market uh, for the produce you know what I hear you saying would be music to my ears if I were a farmer but what, what, what I don't fully understand is the role a political party would play in a space such as the one you describe when for every agricultural produce we have there's some organization that oversees it there's some ministry there's some department that oversees it there's a circle they belong to meaning it is a, a marketplace that is fairly well structured so now as a political party where would you fit in and where and how would you benefit from these existing structures because if you talk about farmers they exist people who would like perhaps to have their voices heard which is what politicians would do for them exist so the role of the political party then becomes advocacy mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in in most instances the farmers are, are voices are not heard mm -hmm. the voices that are heard are the voices of the middlemen the voices of those uh, in power and the ones who are actually oppressing the farmers in many instances so then uh, for us because our interest is actually in the uh, uh, well-being of the farmer uh, being in a position to actually speak out whenever we see an area uh, where the farmer is being oppressed because we we, we are able to do that yeah? and uh, it's also the reason why uh, anytime I go somewhere and I find people telling uh, giving me their issues as farmers uh, this weekend we were at uh, uh, I was at uh, the uh, pig uh, fa uh, farmers uh, kind of uh, association mm. uh, meeting uh, where they want uh, or they they had met to try figure out how uh, to s set up a cooperative uh, instead uh, for, for for them and uh, so they went then they were giving me the challenges that they have uh, but from what they are doing uh, speaking to the uh, pig farmers in Moranga, there is a cooperative in Moranga uh, for pig farmers, but it's probably not there in other counties. So, so what they're trying to do is to put up the national one, but with branches uh, across different different counties. So the idea is uh, for us as a political party, then we're pro able to provide a platform uh, for advocacy uh, mm -hmm. and for helping them even putting together such. Right now, being uh, within the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition, it also means that uh, we are able to help them reach the different uh, governmental uh, agencies that they might require. Mm -hmm. uh, like now, in this case, uh, we I, I promised uh, them uh, to to help them with the Ministry of Cooperatives in them setting up, but also uh, looking at uh, the new government directives uh, on the role of the. Uh, our, our foreign offices and uh, ambassadors and uh, outside the country on how to they can even help them get markets 
uh, outside the uh, Kenya for such. Of course, I, I was clear to them that Saudi Arabia might not be a good market uh, for them and their pigs, but we can find other markets. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I'm, I'm still not getting, because I can hear the issue of advocacy um, on behalf of farmers, which, like CJ is saying, can be done through cooperatives and associations and all. Why join a political party? Why should farmers join a farmer's party? What do they what value do they get out of it? You know, in addition to being members of a local cooperative, a national association, why then be a member of a political party? You see, even the farmers don't even have to join the political party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that the political party's agenda is the farmers. Okay. Yeah. So the farmers can be in all these other parties the same way they can vote for all these other parties. But the agenda for the political part party being farmers party is actually to advocate for farmers. And uh, that's why for us we are happy that within the coalition mm -hmm. uh, that we are in, the Kenya Kwanza coalition, we'll be able to actually articulate the issues of the farmers. We'll be able to uh, speak for the farmers within the coalition. Actually, even when we were joining the political party, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we said, uh, we, uh, even the uh, president uh, said that there can be no bottom up without the farmer mm -hmm. because the farmer is at the bottom of the pyramid. And our role is actually to try to bring up the farmer from that bottom uh, up okay. uh, the pyramid. The Kenya Kwanza manifesto is anchored on five pillars. Number one, agriculture. Number two, of course, universal health care. Uh, number three is housing, number four is MSMEs, and number five is the digital economy. When you look at them like that, and you see how much agriculture has been given, you know, the front and center role, every time the president is speaking, he's talking about agriculture, we've got to empower agriculture. The first government intervention by the William Ruto administration goes into agriculture with a fertilizer subsidy. The question I've got to ask you is, what how much contribution did the farmers party have number one on the manifesto and number two on pushing for the implementation of that manifesto i think in terms of the manifesto we we had significant contribution uh and uh in, in the writing of the manifesto as well as uh, in the contribution through our actions on what goes into the manifesto when you're talking about the tea and coffee reforms which actually were the front the front line uh, then this you'll see that indeed the manifesto of actually form a very big uh, part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, you uh, and and also on on the reforms, uh, and uh, I think in terms of going forward, uh, the role that we'll continue to play. You saw I think uh, last week when there was a coup attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, within the tea uh, sector, yeah, <laughs> where the old <laughs> the old boards uh, that we kicked out mm -hmm. uh, through the reforms uh, uh, managed to get back to the offices uh, through uh, some back uh, hand back door deals. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately, uh, we, we we communicated to the relevant uh, people, and uh, uh, there was an, a statement that was issued uh, and. Uh, that these people are actually persona non gratis in all those offices and that they will not be allowed back. Mm. So at least it, it shows that the government is there to safeguard the interests and also that farmers party ourselves uh, will also uh, keep having a, a, a voice mm. uh, for these farmers uh, going forward. Our interest, as you said, is to actually see uh, the farmers thrive and to see agriculture also thrive because in terms of job creation, in terms of uh, the, 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 the food uh, building on our food basket, because as you said, uh, so that Kenya is, uh, cannot feed itself. Mm. If you're importing 17% of your food, then it also means that you cannot feed yourself. You can't really feed yourself. Yeah, you can't feed yourself. And that's why I was also happy to see that the president is carrying on uh, with a big four uh, mm. agenda with food security being key. Uh, on, on that agenda mm -hmm. so that we can actually uh, find a way to bring down the imports uh, on food uh, and uh, uh, grow the food ourselves. But we do not grow food if uh, it is not profitable to the farmer because farming is a business. Mm. If a party is a political party has an agenda that focuses on the interest of the farmer or in the interest of farming, I want to assume two things, that one, they would understand the problems that bedevil uh, the farming community. Two, that they would also have considered and thought of ways in which 
these problems can be done away with or can be resolved. Now, the discussion of food security is a perennial one, especially now that we have drought and now that we have, it's now going to visit 5 million people facing starvation. It becomes an all-important question. As a political party, what would you say are the main issues that you've come across that bedevil farming in this country and why it is that we are not able to feed ourselves as we could? And two, what are the solutions that you've come up with and figured that if these were put in place, these problems would actually cease? I think one of the biggest problems is uh, the dependence on, uh, on rain, uh, rainwater for, for, mm. for farming. Uh, and uh, that's why in the in the former administration where I was a PS I was a PS uh, the the big four uh, was was about uh, the building of dams uh, to allow for 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 for, for us to actually uh, move away from uh, rain fed agriculture mm. uh, we also ha came up with a number of irrigation schemes uh, if you look at all the way from West Pokot to Turkana to the different uh, uh, places uh, irrigation schemes so so one is to find ways to actually get water to our farms yeah mm. uh, secondly is on subdivision of land uh, we've had uh, the the issue of subdivision of land uh, to very uh, small pieces yeah uh, unfortunately in Kenya the issue of, of land is very emotive so you are unable to to do it like the Rwanda way where they brought all these farmers together, put them in a housing scheme, give them all the land, uh, have the land uh, put together for uh, purposes of agriculture. If it's rice, uh, uh, drive water there, create mm -hmm. the paddies and, and all that. So Kenya, we are unable to do that. Why? Uh, as I said, the issue, issue of land is very emotive. If you tell someone that uh, your piece of land, you need to move away from here to go build your house somewhere else so that this land you can use it as a community to farm. I think you'll 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 encounter very serious challenges, including the legal ones. Mm -hmm. Of course, because our judiciary, uh, being independent, uh, is able to rule on people's uh, freedoms uh, that they they they, 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 they do have. Yeah. So probably what we need to look at is uh, with that agriculture, how do we actually bring in the commercial agriculture? Mm -hmm. uh, we tried and failed with the Galana Kulalu, but that does not mean that we cannot try again. Yeah. And of course, and uh, we actually fail. We failed because uh, we we lost a lot of money, and mm. uh, those people have not been brought to book, uh, and the program and project essentially was abandoned, even after uh, putting up. I think it gobbled up uh, between seven to twelve billion uh, shillings. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, but but you see, even even with these small pieces of land, mm. uh, there are still things that the farmers can do that can make them money. As we are giving as an example, like pig farming. Yeah. Ah, uh, the chicken for me. The diff so it, people need to, uh, to need to move away from subsistence farming on their on their pieces of land mm. if they are too small. We find them different other options. There are also other produce that are horticultural that also are quite uh, high uh, earning. Yeah. Mm. So it's more around mapping, uh, uh, doing the the, uh, the mapping of of the lands uh, across and seeing what can farmers actually do mm. uh, with their land to give them a high yield uh, on the same. So so I think if we can look at those, uh, and of course, finally, it's, it's all about the markets, uh, because as long as you have markets, farmers will always grow. Uh, uh, we, we saw avocados, yeah. Mm. A few years back, avocados was, was, was uh, not being considered anywhere, yeah. Right now, last year, we exported 54 billion shillings worth of avocados, uh, way more than coffee, mm -hmm. actually three times more than coffee and half uh, what we exported on tea. So it means now, as, and we are seeing an increase in the, in the growing of avocados. So as long as there's a market, yeah, then the farmers will grow. They'll thrive. Yeah, they'll thrive. 29 minutes to eight. Time for us to take a break. Our guest this morning is Irongo Nyakera. He's a former principal secretary. He's currently a chairman of the Farmers Party. We are talking about the role of political parties in advancing our democracy and championing causes. He's telling us why the Farmers Party and what the Farmers Party stands for. Let's continue this conversation after this break. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, C.T. Muga and Irongo Nyakera, Chairman, the Farmers Party, part of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. So we've seen the 
president has arranged his government and the ministry the once known ministry of agriculture livestock fisheries and cooperative development has now been reduced into ministry of agriculture and livestock fisheries gone cooperative forms a different ministry now if you look at the structure of government as farmers party and as the champion of farmers and farmers issues are you satisfied with the way it's our current structure for agriculture is from national level to county level um actually i'm very satisfied with the current structure um as uh, you know the agriculture is devolved uh to the counties mm. and actually the only function that is left uh, to the national government under schedule 8 and that's subsection 28 is actually on agriculture policy and mm. uh, also on uh, artificial insemination and uh, so for livestock yeah so now what they've done is they've uh, built in the they uh, uh, brought down to ministry of agriculture to two state departments one is the state department of crop development mm -hmm. and the other state department of livestock development mm -hmm. yeah so so that now those that covers the functions that are non devolved and as you saw the president uh, from his initial address uh, uh, similarly during the campaign uh, he had promised that within the first year uh, of his government they will have devolved every other function that has not yet been devolved but had been put out for the same mm -hmm. so i think most of the functions then now in agriculture move to the county governments uh it's the county governments that uh then will uh even even on issues of the cooperatives uh issues of uh markets issues of uh the land policy uh within okay not policy uh, I, I, actually the land the, use land use mm -hmm. yeah uh, because it's uh, lies within their physical planning uh, department so so i think i, I think the, the structures are fine uh will uh, of course now the ministry of cooperatives and msmes uh, which is being headed by uh Chilgui, uh will uh, will now be working closely with the ministry of agriculture uh, because uh, as we say the agriculture uh, will uh, thrive on having strong cooperatives mm. uh, the government has put out uh, 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 within the manifesto uh, about 250 billion shillings over the, from the 2023 to 2027 budget uh, that will be spent uh, on uh, enhancing cooperatives uh, enhancing agriculture uh, through farmer organized cooperatives and uh, uh, so, so so that then uh, th that's how the two ministries mm. I expect I, I imagine will be working uh, closely with each other but really it's the counties that will have, uh, will need will to carry the, the weight it will carry the weight of agriculture so then are which you expect that a lot of the money that was budgeted and going to the ministry of agriculture at national level will now be reduced and more money goes to the counties because look at how much money has been going to agriculture supporting all those state departments there were four state departments previously yeah. and very many directorates at yeah. uh, kilimo house mm. And then look at the very many parastatals under agriculture. All the research and these other uh, parastatals, how should those ones now be taken down to the county? So the counties are actually running agriculture and not Kilimo House. Uh, those remain because those are policy organs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, of course, research continues to be more very important. And I hope that there will be a bigger budget uh, for research yeah mm -hmm. uh so so the implementation of agriculture is what goes to the counties but as we we know it's not like the the farmers are getting free money in all these instances so the county is more around uh, how do they organize their farmers to benefit like now these subsidized fertilizers mm -hmm. yeah how do you ensure that the county the fertilizer being brought uh to moranga is different from the fertilizer going to baringo uh, or fertilizer going to isiolo because the weather conditions are different, mm. the, the, the soils are, profiles are different. So those are things that then uh, the counties should be looking at. Yeah. So so the devolve, we, I don't expect that there's a lot of money. There's just a lot of functions that then move to the county and also to the county assemblies in terms of how do they uh, cascade down the policies that have been generated at the national level to bring them and localize them at the county levels. Mm. Should this fertilizer subsidy then not being not be run by the counties why is the national government running the fertilizer subsidy i think it's also from a point of procurement uh it's probably cheaper and easier for the national government to do that uh, because then they're doing it in bulk mm. uh and uh now and, and also probably also in controlling the wastages so the question is how then does it move uh from the national level to the county level 
uh, with equitable distribution mm -hmm. so that it's, it favors farmers across the country and not just for that's, that's That's the theory. That's yeah. the theory because our experience with centralizing some of these things, unfortunately, if you go by our history, there are pleasant memories of things like Kenya Farmers Association and how well it served the farmers. But in recent years, the memories are terrible. <laughs> whether you want to talk about the MES, whether you talk about KEMSA, the, the memories are horrible. Even fertilizer itself. <laughs> but yes, it, it's, it's, it's horrible. In fact, if you centralize it, what you're then saying is that you've opened the door to this very famous word that existed before Kenyans owned it and nationalized it, cartels. It, 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 it becomes something else. One gets the impression we're trying to reinvent the wheel which already exists. How to cascade these things and how to ensure that the farmers benefit, it's been done before. You, you know, we, we're, we're not inventing something that is new here. You have been in a position of authority and you are probably best placed to, this, to, 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 to tell us how. How then would we ensure that this thing that we are speaking about gets done? Because it's been done before. It's not that it hasn't been done. How do you ensure? Okay, you set this thing in motion. How do you ensure that the farmers actually derive the benefit that was intended? I think, okay, it's a question of having one cartel or 47 cartels. I, I think that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Devolving <laughs> cartels. <laughs> Devolving the cartels. But, but, but I think then uh, speaks uh, then to the role of uh, our oversighting our uh, authorities and more so when you come to the devolved functions to the Senate mm -hmm. and the role of Senate and what these uh, senators need to be doing. I saw uh, about two weeks ago the senators uh, asking for more money. Uh, for for them to provide the oversight functions, and I I I, I agree with them uh, that we actually need to empower the office of the senators, mm -hmm. uh, not to give them a kitty for them to go around campaigning, but to give them the manpower to actually oversight mm -hmm. uh, the the county government. And uh, if we are going to devolve more, uh, like last year we p gave the counties about three fifty seven billion shillings, mm -hmm. uh, so this year will be a lot more if we are talking about uh, the the the. Of, uh, the, uh, the devolving more functions, so probably 400 billion. If you have that much, at the very least, even 0.01% of that uh, should uh, go into oversighting uh, the, the council. So, so I think the roles, then we need to look at the roles of the oversighting uh, offices and more so the county, mm. uh, the, the senator uh, office. Sure. Uh, yeah. Even as you look at a, a lot of these things, I mean, I, I shudder to think about... Uh, the, the the reality of the situation on the ground vis-a-vis -vis what is what has been done in the back um, um i i look at organizations like uh, the kenya agricultural research institute and the work that they do i mean brilliant work that has been renowned around the world and the information that they have uh, you know just in the minds of the experts who who work there who consult there on a daily basis for kenya and uh, here we are talking about a country then can, that cannot feed itself. And there are very many other things that we look at. And if we look at the countries that thrive, their staple is the cheapest thing you can find. It's the most affordable uh, food item that you can find. And I've said that the, the maize flour that is a staple of this country should not keep us in headwinds in the manner in which it has over the last few years. I am one of those who believes that a subsidy is an expensive thing for government. It is extremely expensive. But the question is, how then do you go about it to make sure that the country can feed itself and keep imports of food way below 17% if not for just being really serious about the job that we have with that, that, that needs to be done at that level? Whether it's at national level, whether it's at county level, to say that all the building blocks to make this thing work are present in this country, uh, even with prevailing weather patterns and such. But the drivers of these engines of offices, I think, have to be a little bit more serious about the work that they've been given to do. I, I think, uh, sadly, uh, we're probably a country that does not consume, uh, consume our research. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of research that we do. Mm. As you said, uh, curry, caro. Uh, all the different tea research institute, coffee research, they are all over. Uh, and actually they do brilliant work. Uh, but we do not consume 
their research. Yeah, actually, other countries, oh. <laughs> other ones that consume and then, it, and then thrive. <laughs> and they thrive. consume Kenya's research and then thrive <laughs> and on the same. Yes, oh. yes. So, so, so it's it's uh, how do we move from there uh, in that not consuming that because. Uh, uh, the, the, like when w w what they they look at w when they do their research, they are actually able to co to uh, customize uh, the if it's uh, the chicken, if it's the uh, maize to different parts of the country mm. and give seedlings that actually will work mm -hmm. uh, and grow and uh, get uh, better yields in different parts. Uh, you'll find that uh, so some county governments were buying normal maize, painting it yellow, and giving to the farmers and calling it curry. Uh, maize, mm. yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I think we need to uh, find ways to uh, to actually uh, consume that research uh, on agriculture. Uh, but I, I, I think the the, the f main thing is uh, commercial agriculture. If we can actually be able to to interest uh, investors into commercial agriculture, uh, because then you have larger pieces of land that can be used for the same purpose. If you look at Muranga, it's just down the road mm. uh, here. Uh, these guys, Del Monte, have 28,000 acres. They, they used 8,000. Yeah. yeah, the other 20,000 are lying fallow. Uh, you go uh, ne next door, uh, there is uh, this uh, Kakuzi. Kakuzi have 40,000 acres. Yeah, uh, they, they use less than 10% of that. Yeah, the rest is very fertile land that is lying fallow. Mm. Between Kakuzi and Del Monte, they lie on 14.6% of the county of Muranga. Yeah. <laughs> Two guys. <laughs> Let me ask the question. When you say the land is fallow, what do you mean? Not being used. They don't not, grow not anything. They don't, they, don't grow they don't grow anything of value. They don't not grow even trees. They just have some cows grazing uh, uh, with uh, the Maasai herders, a few. Yeah. Uh, so they are ranching? No. It's not large scale ranching. It's just the land just uh, is there. They, have, they are not using it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. And why are they not using it? Mm. The two that you mentioned are big commercial farmers. Yes. You're talking about interesting commercial, large commercial farmers. Those are two large commercial farmers. Why would they not put land that they have access to? You see, to Eric, I, I'm sure even you, maybe you might have some plot in Kajiado, mm. some two acres, <laughs> which you don't visit often, mm. but it's yours. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so for them, it's the same. It's this land, very large land. That I'm they a speculator. Hold. They're yeah. not... <laughs> For them, probably is they're saying that in 5, 10, 20, 30 years, they'll get more investment to grow into it, to okay. use it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then they have, they have, they're looking for a 99 year lease. Yeah. So how can government either work with them or partner with them or uh, make use of that land? Yeah. Because it's fertile uh, mm -hmm. for commercial farming. So essentially, you have some 50,000 acres that can very quickly be put to, to good commercial use. Mm. Yeah. So I think there, there's probably a, a, co co a conversation that uh, we need to have on how to, uh, to, to map out uh, pieces of land, large uh, scale land, that then uh, see if we can actually do commercial uh, farming on them. You've given a very good example, and it's um, an example that you're saying it's a possible area for solution. You wanted to be governor of that county of Moranga, yes. right? So you must have thought about this and thought about how to approach this into a solution. What was your what What do you have in mind? How would you convert those fifty thousand or so acres into proper commercial use? I think that's that's. You see, when we are talking about PPP, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's probably a, an area of uh, which we we could have uh, looked at, uh, which is. Uh, through the government and the and, and those if it's Kakuzi and if it's Del Monte, uh, to to see how then can they partner uh, with the national government or county government uh, in in putting that land uh, to good use, uh, because PPP is looking at how the public will benefit, but also how the private sector, uh, the investor, will also benefit because if the land is rightfully theirs, mm. you see, there's uh, really no way that we can go and grab the land uh, from them because mm. even your Kajiado land, you don't want someone to take it because you're not using it. Yes. Yeah. But of course, if someone came uh, with a proposal of partnership, uh, which, uh, and the investors are there, yeah, because if you're saying that you're actually doing import substitution, uh, substitution uh, instead of uh, importing uh, 25 billion worth of rice and we have land there that can we can grow rice yeah why don't we 
use that money instead to grow rice mm. uh, in those pieces of land. Uh, and both of them actually are quite fertile. The, this, uh, the Kakuzi one goes all the way to Kilimambogo. Uh, the Del Monte one has uh, River Chani and the other rivers passing through. So they have water, they have dams, they can actually land that can be put in proper use, uh, proper agriculture uh, use. And these are just two examples within uh, Muranga. Yeah. Mm. If you go to uh, the uh, De La Mea's, the others, you'll find similar, so uh, similar si si situations of mm. land. Wheat is another huge uh, import. Uh, actually, wheat and rice are almost at the same level. Mm. Uh, on, But the lands in the Rift Valley can actually be used uh, to grow wheat at commercial levels. You find that the wheat farmers locally are not even getting the local market. Yeah. Uh, because the prices are too high. So how do we ensure that we bring down the prices of the locally produced wheat, yeah, instead mm. of going to import wheat from outside? Yeah. Those but this but this we know. I mean how to bring down the prices. We talk of subsidies. I mean it's a question of actually protecting your own market and protecting your farmers and protecting now the tools for doing this are known. They 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 they're not unknown. Uh, how to ensure that what our farmers produce are viably competitive, they are also known. There's someone called the, the, uh, the small-scale farmer. They are the majority of farmers we have in this country. Mm -hmm. Now, perhaps if this small-scale farmer, in addition to what we are saying, was given the sort of advantages that they need to be able to do these very things, because a small-scale farmer also affords us that diversity of agricultural products depending on which part of the country that they are in. Mm. And they are there. I say this because if you say, for instance, look at rice farming in Japan, it's something I like mentioning every once in a while. It's extremely expensive to produce rice in Japan. You can't compare with rice from Vietnam, China, India. However, because of the government intervention, the rice farmers are able to sell their rice because they are protected. Now, it isn't as though we cannot. The question that we actually are asking, the one I'm asking is, how do we reduce the self-interest that we have in this country that brings about these problems we keep discussing in, cy in cycles and circles? Because it boils down to that. It's not as though a uh, solution, a viable solution is, is completely out of the way and that we can't figure it out. We can and we know. You have been the position of authority and you know. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, the subsidies, um, you see, what we were saying uh, earlier is uh, how do we bring the small scale farmers mm. together? Yes. Yeah. And we'll be able to bring them together through cooperatives. Yes. Yeah. And once you're able to bring them together through cooperatives, they even have a voice and it's even easier for them to actually to, uh, have advocacy. Mm. But even more than that, then the, like the 250 billion shillings that I've said that will go to uh, agriculture, mm. uh, f uh, it will go to these farmer organized yeah, mm. uh, cooperatives mm. and uh, societies. Yeah. So, so, so even subsidies uh, will be able to go down in that and even protecting them yeah how do they get protected because as you've said it's not even only in in in, in japan if you go to the to the u.s corn yeah mm -hmm. it's they produce it at a much higher price than globally but they're subsidized in such a big way that you cannot really import corn mm. into the u.s yeah so you're protecting the farmers in that way and you see okay i've seen the, the president has talked uh, that the uh, subsidies will only go uh, will go into production not consumption but I, I guess that's why even on the co production then agriculture is production yeah so we expect that then there'll be uh, subsidies that go that direction so i think f from my end if the farmers are able to uh, be assisted to organize themselves mm. yeah uh, then subsidies uh, should also be provided to them but more so uh, how do they get a voice uh, to actually champion their their interests and, interest. uh, and 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 uh, uh, be able to, to articulate their problems and solutions because they know them best. The party's away. Irongo, final question. Um, you, your party joined Kenya Kwanza Coalition among very many other parties. And of course, deals were struck at that point of campaigns. We are seeing deals being fulfilled. 
you are partners ANC have gotten something, Fort Kenya have gotten something, PA have gotten something, Mandeleo Chap Chap have gotten something, DP have gotten something. Has Farmers Party gotten anything yet from the Kenya Kwanzaa in terms of government appointment, government positions? I think actually the, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa was formed by three parties initially, mm. uh, which was UDA, ANC and Fort Kenya. Uh, from there then we had the pre-election coalition was only an additional eight parties mm -hmm. yeah so we became a total of 11 parties and uh, farmers party is one of those 11 parties uh then the other parties uh joined initially in spirit <laughs> because <laughs> like like uh, the uh, like uh, the mcc the Ch 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 and, and pa pa. those were joined in spirit because yep. legally they were in azimio yep. yeah uh, and then there are those that have come in as post-election coalitions, mm. um, like the MDG and the and the others. And I believe others will also be coming the U, UDP and the uh, and the other mm. UDM, the one for Northern Kenya, yep. Robbers. Yep. Uh, so what the our coalition agreements from the beginning uh, were that uh, we are all going for a hand, mm. yeah, individually as Farmers Party as well as together as Kenya Kwanzaa because our presidential candidate was one. Mm. And once. Once we, we, we hunt down the antelope or the deer or whatever it is or the rabbit, and yeah. this time we manage to get an elephant, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, then everybody will be accommodated. Yeah. So, of course, it started uh, with those ones who had those interests at the high level. Uh, the others, we are all still there. We, of course, waiting to, to, to see how the parties uh, will all benefit. The years have gone. The you know, the, Matumbo is still there. has gone. The Matumbo. big legs have gone. <laughs> still so wow. Ma Matumbo Farmers is there. Farmers party. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there are still other parts of the elephant. Sauti <laughs> ya Okay. <laughs>